Let's talk about soy, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things. Uh, 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 let's talk about soy. All right, soy products. A lot of the times, people who are going on a, a vegan or vegetarian diet will use tofu or some form of meat substitute. A lot of the times, what that is is soy-based tofu products. Um, I apologize for all of you who really enjoy them and who really like them, but hopefully I can kind of shed some light on my concerns with soy and why you may want to avoid most, if not all, of those products. Okay, so there's a few things about soy that make it not the best to be consuming on a regular basis. One of these things is that it's a protease or a trypsin inhibitor. Uh, lima beans and soybeans are kind of the two big ones in, for this. Now what this means is that there are certain aspects about soy that inhibit trypsin from doing what it wants to do. And what trypsin is, is it's an enzyme in the body that breaks down proteins. What it does is it breaks them down in order for us to digest them properly. So if we inhibit trypsin, we end up inhibiting the ability to digest these proteins. Now trypsin is produced from the pancreas. So if we inhibit trypsin, the pancreas realizes this, and it'll try to produce kind of an extra amount of trypsin to sort of work around this problem. So in turn, the pancreas has to work really hard when we're inhibiting trypsin. When this happens, we get hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the pancreas. So basically, the cells, we produce more of them, and they get enlarged. This causes, in turn, an enlarged pancreas. With that, we get kind of all of the inflammation and kind of the negative properties that come along with that. So we don't want this. This isn't, this isn't a good thing. Another reason why soy isn't necessarily the best thing in the world is it has a high amount of phytates. Uh, soybeans, linseed, sesame seed, all of these have high levels of phytates. And basically what phytates are is phosphorus is stored in plants as phytic acid. And then when that phytic acid binds with a mineral, it creates phytate. So phytate and vitamin D kind of play with each other and they sort of affect one another. So if we have high levels of phytate, it's been shown to kind of cause issues with absorption and maintenance of vitamin D levels. So when we eat phytate, it basically it breaks up into phytic acid and then in turn it wants to bind to minerals inside of our gut, which isn't a good thing. So when that happens, we also end up getting a decrease in absorption of vitamins and minerals, but also it's been shown to kind of decrease the digestibility of starches, proteins, and fats. But we have to give it its due because it also binds to the bad. So it'll bind to heavy metals, it'll bind to toxins, and when it goes through this, the kidneys before it gets excreted, which some of it will, is it'll help decrease the chance of kidney stones, and when it's in the bloodstream, it also kind of helps with cardiovascular issues. So it's got some good and bad. Another reason is lectin. There's high levels of lectin in soy, and basically what lectin is, is it's a protein that is part of or kind of contributes to cell membranes. So it's good for basically cell activity, it's good for cell adherence, and it's good for the pre-programmed cellular death, which is something that we want. But it also causes a lot of issues because lectin doesn't digest. When it goes into our system, it can help contribute to leaky gut. If you haven't heard of leaky gut, I'll kind of give a really quick explanation. Um, I won't go too far into it. That could be something for another day. But basically, when we eat food, when it goes through our stomach, it kind of rubs against our stomach lining and in turn can cause a little bit of cellular damage. Now, normally, we would just repair that little bit of cellular damage that happens and it's no big deal. However, when we have a lot of lectin going through our system, what can happen is it can cause enough damage that it actually kind of breaks away that cell wall of our stomach and then cause leaky gut in a sense. And that's not good because if that happens, what will we'll end up sort of going on is the stuff that we want to try to keep out might get in and the stuff we want to keep in might get out. But I can go kind of into that another day. But with that, what can happen is we can have, with an increase in lectin, you can get diarrhea, you can get cramps, even vomiting because of basically it's an increased immune response. And 
Also with that, you get increased inflammation. So lectins, not something that we want to have large doses in. And a lot of the times when people are like, is gl- I have a gluten intolerance, it might actually be a lectin issue because we get that from grains as well. So that can be kind of playing a role. How we can get away from this is if we sprout, ferment, or soak certain things, it can help kind of decrease the amount of lectin that's in it. So another issue with soy is the isoflavins. Now, uh, this is where it gets a little bit complicated, but genistine, diazine, and glycetine are basically what make up the isoflavins that are in soy. And what these are is they're bio, they're <laughs> bioflavonoids, but people kind of, this is when they're talking about the estrogen component of soy. And it's really, really, really undecisive, and there's not a whole lot of agreement going on. It's been shown pretty good to show benefits for the heart. For hormones, uh, there's some good and some bad, especially with testosterone levels for men. And when it comes to serotonin, this is it gets really tricky there, but it's been shown to kind of cause some issues with proper reuptake of serotonin levels and... There's a few things that we need to be careful with there, but I'm not going to go too into it just because I don't feel like my knowledge is vast enough to really comment too much on that, so we'll move on. Soy also has high levels of goitrogens, which basically are things that contribute to getting goiter. If you don't know what goiter is, basically, in order for our thyroid to function properly, it needs iodine, and goitrogens kind of decrease that ability of iodine to get to the thyroid. So soy-based baby formula was actually when they kind of figured this out because babies were getting thyroid issues and they realized it was because of this super large amount of um, basically goitrogens from the soy as well as a deficiency in iodine. And then that's when they started kind of looking into it more and more. So these are just kind of, I really, really quickly went through, but sort of a few of the main reasons why, to me, soy isn't really a good idea. So my conclusion for soy, soy soy-based products, is it worth the risk? I don't really think so. Um, But if you're going to go about having soy products, my recommendation would be some form of fermented soy products, um, like natto or kimchi or something of the sorts, just because you get all of the good stuff that comes along with those. For instance, like NATO has really high vitamin K2, which is important for calcium homeostasis. Um, Video for another day. But I would try to avoid as much as you can um, a lot of the tofu soy-based products, but make your own decision. Um, You know, I presented some facts today. Look it over, do your own research, find out if it's something that you want to be consuming or if it's something that maybe is better to avoid. There's still a lot of disagreement kind of in the research community about whether or not it should be incorporated into people's diets or not. But make the decision for yourself. Uh, Just do it in an intellectual way. Do the research, find out if it's something you're eating every day. I, I highly recommend that you look into it and find out if it's something that you want to continue to do. Um, Also, we didn't get into GMO soy products or genetically modified soy products, but again, take everything that I said before and just multiply it by more bad. So I would, again, really try to avoid those, but it's up to you. You make your own decisions. See you next time. Oh, shout.